I'm a low-level U.S. government employee. I just saw something I wasn't supposed to see. You know that meme about how presidents and governors, after getting elected, look super shell-shocked and stressed the next time they make a public appearance? Like the first thing that happens after you come into power is that you're pulled into a room and told all of the secrets of the world? Well, turns out it's true. As a matter of fact, it's a VHS tape. The four-hour tape was always a bit of an urban legend at the office. I'll be keeping the details of my role in government very very vague, but to be absolutely clear, I'm very low level. My role is caked between layers of bureaucracy, and in the grand scheme of things, it's a pretty inconsequential role. When you're working at my level, you're generally not privy to any high-level secrets. Yes, top secret meetings did occasionally happen in our building, but my focus is pretty limited and heavily administrative. So, you do what any other department does when you're in the bottom rung of the hierarchy. You discuss rumors, rumblings, crazy conspiracy theories, and everything in between. It's water cooler conversation for us. Man, I wonder what the folks at the top are doing right now, that kind of stuff. Out of all of the rumors that fluttered around the office, the four-hour tape was always the one found the most fascinating. The crux of it, once you reach the highest clearance level, you are sat down and shown this tape. None of us knew what the contents of the tape were, or if a tape like this even actually existed, but it was fun to speculate about it every now and then. Most of the time, we found with our little rumors and conspiracy theories, that the most mundane answer was usually the correct one. Life, in general, finds a way to surprise us with how boring everything can be. Now, there's something you should know about me before I continue. I'm a wimp. I'm meek, anxious, and generally restless. I'm a chronic rule follower. There is no part of me that wants to dig up secret documents and uncover, the truth, about what happens at the highest levels of government in our country. So when I discuss the events of four nights ago, please be mindful of that. I didn't ask for this. And I'm only sharing because I don't know how much time I have left anyway. And I can't live with this stuck in my conscience, alone. It was nighttime at the office. I'm known to be a bit of a chronic workaholic, and there was something really wanted to get done before the week was over, so I was working later than usual. I went to print a document on what I thought was the printer in my immediate vicinity. The notification on my computer showed that my document was being printed, but I didn't hear any noise or paper coming out from my local printer. I checked the name of the device, selected, and it looked like Eld accidentally clicked on a printer that was being used on another floor. Side. In any normal circumstances, I probably would have just forgotten about that mistake and reprinted the documents on my local printer again, but, our general management here is quite stringent on us making sure that all confidential documents are accounted for. We are not allowed to share department-specific documentation to other departments. Fuck it, I thought. I looked up a map in my inbox showing the locations of all of the company printers. Turns out, I'd accidentally clicked on the printer named Prince Charming on the seventh floor. Ha. Huh. Funny name. Off I went. I really should have just let it be. I got to the elevator and rode it up to the seventh floor. I emerged onto the mostly empty office area. In case you were wondering, the building I work in is huge. But. I'd worked there long enough to know my way around it, so I knew the area surrounding the printer relatively well. I made my way through the hallways and eventually spotted the printer with my freshly printed papers mending it. I gave myself a mental pat on the back for continuing my lifelong streak of following the rules. As I went to grab the papers, I noticed some light buzz in a meeting room nearby. I looked through the window to see roughly ten people hanging out around a snack table. In the room was a large old-looking TV on a cart, and rows of some of the fanciest folding chairs I'd ever seen, organized in a neat fashion. 